I left high school. I was a good Christian little boy. Went into the service. Next thing you know, I was fornicating like crazy. Why? Because pleasure. We were created as sexual beings. And so it drives us. From a very young age, I remember going to bed one night and had this strange dream. I'm going to use conversation like that. All right. And in this strange dream, I had a pleasure, a high that I'd never had before. And so I couldn't wait to go to bed again the next night. I was young. I was impressed, but I didn't know any better. Yeah. I started meeting girls, and when I met girls, something strange would happen down below. Yeah. And I found myself not, not being able to stand up straight anymore, mm -hmm. but I would always find some kind of post, kind of prop my knee up, <laughs> lean on, something so they couldn't detect what was going on down below. And so from that moment, the wheels began to turn All right. in your mind. All right. Now, back then in the day, they didn't have, you know, what we have now. I mean, you can find pornography right here on your phone now mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. They can go from soft to hard in the blink of an eye or a touch of a finger. Yeah. But back then, they had, a, it was a channel called, it was Channel 54. And late at night, they would show, you know, adult-type movies. But, you know, you had to have some kind of unscrambling to get it. So when I finally discovered it, because I was watching too much TV, I was like, oh, what is that? And it was through squiggly lines. And so then I figured somehow if I could just turn the channel between half and that, I might be able to see it. But what it did was stoke the fires of what? Desire. But still not being able to fully consummate the thing, I didn't understand the full gratitude or uh, magnification of it All right. until one day when I had this thing happening down below, my hand seemed to brush it. And I realized that that also brought pleasure. Wow. So now I had to, I learned what? Self gratification. Oh, wow. uh, y'all walk with me here. Because I, I, I can't speak for the women. I don't know if y'all is the same or not, but I know it's still an arousal. Right. And I still know that that gratification is ultimately what you want fulfilled. All right. And so if it's not being fulfilled in the right manner, yeah. you're going to find other means in which to fulfill it. Right. So then you begin to create these walls. And if you grew up in, in, in treacherous or violent relationships, you begin to add that to your wall is what true love is. And you begin to seek things that you should not be seeking, but because you are lost behind a wall, you can't see the truth. And we develop these sexual appetites, either it's for the same sex, for the opposite sex, even animals. Because let me, let, me, let me just say this. If, if, if this whole gay movement about civil rights Your, 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 your sexual identity is not a right. You have made a willful choice. Me being black was not a choice. I was born that way. Your sexual preference, even though you want to argue you were born that way, it is a choice that you have to make through either bad information or good information and how you want to fulfill your sexual pleasure because if one side don't want you, another side will always take you. Right. Or because you've been violated, you've been whatever the case may be, you put all those things into play and you begin to assume a situation that really isn't you, but it makes you feel comfortable and it gives you pleasure and nobody else is loving on you. But is it a right? Is it a civil right? right. Are you being mistreated because you are a different color or because you prefer something else. Yeah. Because if that's the case, yeah. what's to stop the next sexual group mm -hmm. from getting what you got? Because yeah. the next one up is pedophilia. Right. You said you can't help who you love. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a person who they can and who they can't love. Yeah. 
Well, today's children are a lot smarter than where we were. And so if they become consenting, then why is it not okay? You can't tell this man that he ain't born that way because you said you was born that way. And then what about the man that loves his sheep? He can't help it. Why? Because he was born that way. And he still gets pleasure because the same motions still have to take place, but yet something's wrong with him and everybody else is fine. Do you see how silly this argument becomes? If you keep trying to find a great area, if you keep squiggling up the lines, and you keep creating these walls of safety that you allow anything and everything to take place because nobody wants to stand strictly on the word of God, which of course is archaic, it's just all about love. If it don't fit the scriptures, you can't fool with it. If it fit, then go for it. But if it don't, you got to let it go. But are you willing to look at yourself and think that way? Or you want to keep walking in your flesh? Because that's what we do, right? Because we allow it, we okay it. Now we do, it's, it's a part of the law of marriage. And in different states, you can go anywhere you want, you can get married. <coughs> People who are fornicating, they get married just because they got in trouble. Somebody pregnant. They're trying to figure out how in the world you get pregnant. Really? In a day and era when nobody has to get pregnant. And so what happens is because you sin, you create another sin, but now you have a child that now you, you know, you, you're trying to figure out do I abort it or do I keep it? So you 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 pile one sin on another sin. Then you end up killing someone because you're trying to hide. You don't want nobody else to know, or you're ashamed, or you ain't ready, but you knew you wasn't ready before you laid down, but yet you laid down with no protection. Uh, come on, man. The way I preach, my whole church should be empty. Because I will hit everything that's moving. Why? That's what the scriptures do. I'm trying to tell you and teach you how to be leaders and come out from behind that wall by tearing the wall down. There is no justification for sexual sin. None. Even when me and my wife are struggling and we're not getting it together like we're supposed to be on an often basis, I got one or two things I can do. I can step out or I can self-gratify. I got to figure out what 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 I'm going to do. That's a struggle. That's an internal choice I have to make. And so if I don't go to my scriptures and understand the scriptures and understand that for better or worse, we got to figure out whatever's going on. Let's figure out the situation and make it better because the Bible says that I'd rather be married than burned because it knows that sex is an issue with all of mankind. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. They've been having sexual problems since the beginning. That's right. Sodom and got, Gomorrah was destroyed because of homosexuality, raping, and everything else. Yeah. Fornication, adultery, you name it. Yeah. Yeah, they did. But yet we say it's all okay. It's, it's all good. We even, David, we, even the rainbow, which was made for a sign that God would never destroy the earth by water again. Now it's a symbol. But we all, we all so passive and we all want to justify everything. None of us are without sin. And I love the homosexual just like I love the fornicator. Ain't nothing changed. Yeah. I'm only trying to preach your wall down. Yeah. Amen, amen. That's it. Yeah. I, I ain't got nothing against you. Yeah. Your preference, that's your preference. That's it. That's but my it. preference is to preach the word. Yeah. And I got to do it the way God gave me to do it. Mm-hmm. That is up to you yeah. if you're going to hear it. Yeah. Or if you're going to tune me out, yeah. turn me off. Unfriend me, unfollow me, <laughs> because I don't line up with what you agree with. But I thought you told me you was a believer. Yeah, but that ain't in there. Okay, if you can come and show me, we can sit down and have a conversation. I'll have a conversation with you. But that's just one wall. I, 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 
there are so many more walls I really want to get into. And I think I will. Because people hear one thing, well, there he, he, you just talk about that. No, and trust me, this whole sexual wall is way more than the, the few minutes I've been talking about. It goes deeper. There is a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of trauma that's involved in that thing. You know, and so because we have um, excommunicated folks, they don't even understand that the love is still there. Yeah. And they say, well, you know, you're homophobic. Ain't, ain't nothing homophobic about me whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I got family that's homosexual. Mm-hmm. I got families in the, in, in the LGBT community. <laughs> and I love them the same. But I don't love the sin. Right. My job is to still talk about the sin. Mm-hmm. I love my son. Yeah. He's a fornicator. Yeah. I still got to talk about the sin. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Nobody gets a pass. Yes, sir. But you got to look into the mirror. And you got to see yourself as it relates to the reflection of the scriptures. And if it does not flow with the scriptures and you are a believer, you got to check yourself. Come on. Right now. I had to. I, look, I, I was so caught up in fornication yeah. that I had a desire to be in porn. But I didn't want nobody to see me. I was trying to figure out, could I be like Racer X or somebody and and have a mask on and that would be my persona, but I would still fulfill my flesh. That's how your mind gets to thinking. Why? Because you want the pleasure that you know. And you want it more than what you really needed. But you can't determine that at that particular time. You just know there is something that I want and I'm out to get it. Yeah. That is a wall because I didn't break. I didn't, I'm telling y'all too much. But I'm trying to tell you where the heart is. I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to reach every. I'm not trying to turn you off. I'm trying to reach you and pull you into the scriptures so that you can see that we all have sin. We all had our issues, but you got to face your issues in order to break through your wall. I had to realize I was damaging people. I had to realize I was hurting myself. I had to realize I was grieving the Holy Spirit. I had to realize, and God really shook me up when somebody almost got pregnant, and, 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 and that, ooh, that, yeah, that woke me up. That woke me up. It woke me up. And I said, Lord, I get it. I'm outside of your will. Now help me fix this thing. That's why you have homosexuals who have turned. That's why you have fornicators and adulterers who have turned. That's why you have people who were going down the wrong sexual road who have turned, not because of themselves, but because of digging into the scriptures and allowing the Holy Spirit to come through so that when I connect to something, I connect to the right stuff. And when I connect to the right stuff, I get the power of the Holy Spirit, which will allow me now to function as a child of God. 